welcome to the webinar of the digitization of work instructions and checklists. So to myself, I'm Jürgen Kohler. Um, I'm, I worked for 15 years in the metal environment. I started to making a technical education there, was a machine operator as well as CNC mills, CNC labs, uh, press punches, bending machines. From there, I went into assembly work centers, did work scheduling for the assembly work centers, did also NP NPIs, so new product introductions. From there, I went into sales and into production planning. So that basically means I can I can evaluate a lot of things. I can feel with the people using work instructions, creating them, and also the people who are hoping for a use of them. So right now, I'm business development manager at VKS, which means Visual Knowledge Share. Um, we created a solution with you can sorry for that you can create quick and easy work instructions as well as checklists we also have a data capturing tool inside of vcas so all your data is stored in a centralized place so if you want to capture any quality data throughout your processes you can do this with vcas and you also have them accessible in a centralized place so yeah why would you use work instructions yeah first of all um with work instructions, you can increase the productivity. It's very simple. You have fast employees and you have a bit slower employees, right? But the slower employees always, yeah, fast employees, they don't want to tell everyone how they are fast. So with work instructions, you, cap you capture the knowledge and also give it to the slow ones. That will increase your productivity. You will have a steady quality because all your employees will work with the same method. So you don't have the human factor so much anymore in the production of products. Your operators will get more flexible. So you can move around between different um, assembly stations, for example. All your operators need to know is how to work with the work instructions. Therefore, they can train themselves. There is no second person anymore required to train the people. And maybe the people don't remember what they got told the day before. So in this case, with digital work instruction or work instructions, you can basically look it up at any time and you don't need to have a second person who's explaining everything to you. Then also you won't have knowledge loss anymore. In every company, there's people who are there for 30 years or more and they were doing the same task their whole life and they are the full experts in it, they know exactly what to do. Well, if these people leave your company or they retire, well, you lose the knowledge. Therefore, with the work instruction, you can capture all this knowledge and keep it in your company. So why would you go digital with your work instructions? That's quite easy to explain. The creation is super fast. The archiving is easy, is centralized. You don't have like maps and folders lying around everywhere. You don't have to be afraid of outdated documentation on the shop floor anymore because the operators will have always the newest work instruction in their hands. That's the next point, the handling. Like an operator doesn't want to go through paper instructions on their workbench. First of all, it takes space from their workbench and it's not easy to handle. Then you need to put it aside, pull it back in. With a little screen, you can do all that. You have a lot of traceability which you can access with digital work instructions and you can also connect your work instructions to machines to tools to measurement tools so for example if you have a bluetooth caliber you can measure you can make your measurement and get the data straight into your work instruction and have them saved in there as well so you can figure out when there's a re uh, rejection from a customer you can figure it out right away in which work order was it in which serial number who did it? When was this happening? Is there more of these not good parts in my production? So here you can see how we are handling this a little bit. So what you see here is basically the navigation page in VKS. So you see different filters, how you can look for your work instructions. So like what I mentioned, if you have paper instructions, you need to search through folders. Where is my work instruction? 
in here, you basically can search them with, uh, with different search criteria. For example, the guidebook number, the name, the work center. So you are today in the assembly work center. You click on the assembly work center, you see all the instructions of this specific work center. And then you can also search for a name of the work instruction. You have a product number, you have an operation number or something like that. You can search for this. So then here you get the search results, you see in which folder they are, who was creating them. And then below that you have the revision control. So you have a complete history of all uh, revisions in here. You see how many steps are in this revision. You see who the author was, what the product number is, the reviewer. You see who created it, when it got updated, and was it published? Was it only a draft or is it right now in the reviewal process? From there, you can navigate into your work instructions. So for an operator, basically what you see now on this sheet is the operator's view in VKS. This view is completely adjustable. So this info panel here on the side, you can hide, you can hide the thumbnails on top. So you can customize this for the operator, how he likes it the best. Or maybe even if you don't wanna have the operator seeing the side panel, you can determine that as well. So in VKS, we mostly work with pictures, videos, PDFs. We can also add text steps, but today we're trying not to do this so much because text is hard to understand. It's difficult to write. And with a picture, it's just like that one. The operator knows right away what he needs to do. And for example, in here, he knows exactly in which order he has to tighten up the screws. Here on the side in the element section, you see some attachments. For example, uh, an operator needs to have his drawings available during his process. He can basically open the drawing here on the side, his work instruction, without the need to print out all the drawing, being on the shop floor, getting oily, getting dirty, maybe they rip. Then the operator needs to ask for an, a new drawing. So here he, the operators have them all available in the work instruction. Then what you see below is basically some forms to capture data. So when your machine stops, the operator can report that. There can also be a rule behind it. So when an operator fills out a machine stop, that the supervisor is getting notified, okay, machine one, two, three is stopped. And that's the reason why the machine is stopped. A tool breakage. So the operator needs to have a new tool out of the warehouse. You can send an email straight out of this form saying, okay, my tool broke, I need a new one. So someone from the warehouse will bring you automatically a new tool. And on the bottom, there's a critical measurement, what you need to do. And behind that, you can say, okay, if there's if the operator is inputting a measurement outside the tolerance, please send me an email, for example, to my quality department or to the supervisor again. Yeah, so all this data being captured in the work instruction, you can follow or trace here in our report section. Um, sorry for the term page, we're gonna see this a little later in the English language. So basically this is um, the report section um, where you see all the data you captured throughout your processes. So if you get a rejection from a customer, you can see exactly who did it, which work order was it, how many other pieces did we do with the same settings and things like that. So you have all this in here, in a centralized point where you capture the data, you also have it stored. Um, now I need a little second. I will go straight into the software and show you very quick how you can create new steps, for example. Okay. So far, we don't see any different um, screen than your PowerPoint slide. So you might need to pause the PowerPoint and pull up the window in front. Yeah, it will come up in a second. Okay, I'll let you know if we still don't see any changes. Yeah. Thank you. And. Ah, perfect. There it is. There we, Thank you. There we go. Okay, so now we are basically uh, straight in WKS and you see how the software looks in real life. So here you see the navigation page, what we had before on the slide. 
um, I now want to create or adjust a guidebook um, towards my needs. So in this case, I want to search for all guidebooks I had created. So you see here, there I have my different guidebooks. And now I say I want to change this specific guidebook. So you see, I already have created a new draft here. And I will go and edit this draft. In here, you can see now how easy it is um, to create a new guidebook. So in this case, I just do one step um, to showcase this. But basically, you can make your pictures um, up front and upload them to your computer. Or you can also take a tablet, go into production, and take the pictures live during the manufacturing of a certain product. And then they're getting uploaded automatically into VKS. So in this case, I just want to tell the operator to screw these two covers on um, this little piece here. Um, I use some droplets for this. In this case, um, I'm taking operation droplet and I point out the screw and I want to say tighten up the screw, for example. We have a built-in translator in here. So if you have different locations or multiple locations, you can also create them right away in different languages. So no one has to translate anymore a work instruction. And you can share it even, you can do a work instruction, for example, in the Netherlands, and you can share it with UK, with the US, with Spain, Italy, it doesn't matter. So now I do the detailed steps. This text will all be shown on the side. I like to do that um, to have my details for work instruction on the side and put only the text basically like a header into the picture so the operator knows like what is the main task in this step in the certain step and if he needs more information he can look on the side so in here i say assemble the covers for example so this text it works all by drag and drop then i want to put like a line in here also drag and drop, I move this over here and I tell my operator, okay, this thing here, that's a critical measurement. So I add another droplet in here. I call this a critical dimension. And then I could actually add a form to this. So the operator needs to measure this with, for example, a Bluetooth caliber or whatever. So for now, I just wanna add another picture in here. What you can do if you wanna have multiple pictures in one step, that's not a problem. So you just choose another picture. You make a snippet basically out of here and you move it into your picture and you can add like multiple of these pictures if you want to. So you see in this case, I wanna have like a zoom in of this specific screw here. So I can move this up and I can say, okay, that's my screw from right here. I have different types of line, what I can adjust here. And then I wanna add my form. So I can say, here's my critical measurement. I just typed this in here for now. Our forms, they are completely customizable. So you can call them however you want. You can add a description to it, you can show it with different triggers. So you can say, please show me this form in every cycle after one hour, after five minutes. So for example, um, in machining, it's often right, an operator is setting up a machine and then this machine runs hundred cycles. So then I can say, okay, this measurement only needs to be checked like every hour or every fifth part. So I can do all this, all this in VKS. So I save now, show it on every cycle. I can say on leaving the step or on entering the step, I can send a copy automatically. So when the operator hits save, a copy is automatically being sent to his supervisor or to whoever you want to send this um, notification. Then also the layout is completely customizable of these forms. So I just put everything what we have in here. And you see, we have single line inputs, multi-line inputs. We have numbers, checkboxes, radio buttons. You can even attach a picture to it. 
So you can say, like, let's say the operator has finished his product. Then you can say, okay, please make a picture of the finished product. And you can attach it with um, your final inspection to the product. So I'm just going to save this. And then basically we have already our step. We have the clear instruction. The operator knows exactly what to do in this specific step, what he needs to do with these parts. And he also is capturing critical um, quality data. So if I go now into the view mode and I look at my uh, work instruction I just created, I basically see exactly what I did before. If I go now to the next step, I getting every single screw. I can adjust this also like that I go straight to the next step. I can forward either by clicking on this arrow, by swiping. I can connect push buttons, pedals to VCash so that the operator is not getting um, disturbed additionally. Just... And here's basically our form we had just created. So the operator can now fill out this form. This can be done for numbers or serial numbers, for example. It can also be done with the help of a barcode scanner, or like I mentioned before, with a Bluetooth caliber or anything you basically can connect. So here you have your checkboxes, the radio buttons. In the list box, I didn't put any uh, choices in there, but I can customize them and I can say reason for scrap, for example. Here, if this would open my camera, in this case, I just want to attach for example, this file here. And then I basically have this also in my report section. So I hit save and all this is getting saved in the background and I have it attached to this specific work order here. In this case, um, this got auto-generated. So if I wanna see now this data, I have this all stored in my production reports over here. So if I look at that, um, must be in here. So here I have what we just filled out. So you see general guidebook information, productivity information. BKS is um, tracking the time in the background. And with the help of the estimated times, BKS is also calculating some productivity information, which you can also view in KPIs embedded in BKS. And then you have an event section, basically, where you see what happened throughout the process. So I see when the operated operation got started. Um, here I see that we filled out this form we embedded in our guidebook. And down here, I can see this form. I also have my file I have attached, so I can open this and basically do anything I want with it. So all this data I can also export, for example, manually to an Excel sheet if I want to create a pivot chart out of it, do some analysis or whatever I want with it. Or I can also, through the API with WCAS, I can automatically communicate all this data with other systems, for example, like an ERP and MES, uh, PLM systems. So yeah, th that's basically like a super, super quick um, overview over WCAS. I don't remember that I have done this like this quickly. Um, I hope I got the most important part for all of you. Um, if there's any questions, um, please write them in the chat so I can answer them. If not, I thank you very much for your patience and waiting on me uh, for my delay. I want to apologize again, but I hope you enjoyed the presentation a little bit. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Koda. That was quite an interesting demo um, of the digitization worksheets. We have one question already coming in. Everybody else, if you have questions, just use the question button and we will have that popping up um, just shortly. Um, we have one attendee asking whether all European languages are, are going to be available or is there like an exception that there are only some languages available? Um, we have languages worldwide, actually. So I can just show you um, a quick overview of what we have there. We have Chinese, um, we have Spanish, um, one second. So here you basically see Czech, German, Spanish, Italian, Chinese, Hindi, Indonesian. So we have quite a lot of um, languages um, where you can translate your work instructions to or your checklists.
Oh, wow. That's quite a lot. Yes. Thank you. If you have any other questions, let, let us know. Um, otherwise, my question would be, um, you have your worksheet order. Um, is there a possibility for experienced workers to also skip subparts of such worksheets? So that if they yes, already um, know the process, they can go on faster? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can do this. So we have also an expert mode. So as a supervisor or a manager, you can determine if you have like super experienced operators, you can determine them as an expert in VKS. So that gives them the right, if they want to, they can change uh, their view mode. They can change to the expert mode and then they only have to go through the expert steps. So for example, um, all the general steps they would skip, but when they get to a step where there is a critical measurement, which is mandatory, then they would need to go through this one specific step, but they would skip all the other steps. Sounds great. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions from the audience as of now. So looking at the time, um, we don't like to overlap too much. I already told you we can um, tell you about the other presentations coming up. So if you're interested in the German presentations, um, you have three more presentations and webinars today. Um, you're very welcome to join them. Otherwise, if you have any other questions about the webinars that have been going on this week, um, just um, report to the organizers and they will happily make them available to you. There's also going to be a, um, a screening of this webinar available and you will get that um, in your mailbox really soon. If you need to contact Mr. Kohler, he just wrote you his information to contact in the in the chat message. So contact that or use your presenter um, contact in the webinar registration. Um, so that wraps it all up. Um, thank you for coming to the Metaf web session today. Um, this wraps up the English sessions that we have planned for this week. We love that you took part in those sessions and took a small glimpse of Metaf with you, even though we couldn't meet in person um, due to the pandemic. We really hope that the next time in March 2021, we can meet again in person in Düsseldorf, Germany, when the next Metaf will take place. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and good luck with all your metalworkings and other advances. Goodbye. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Goodbye.